Hey, love. Hey, love. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I'm Andrea Luzon, Legacy Liberator. I empower leaders to stand in their power, to stand in their passion, to stand in who they are. I especially am really passionate about supporting mothers of neurodivergent children, supporting these mothers in loving their life, loving their children, loving their work, but most importantly, loving themselves. So who here knows that they are a legacy? Yeah, you know you leave a legacy everywhere you go? Yeah. Who knows that first you leave a legacy in your mind and body before it ripples out into the world? Yes, hands, yes. Well, you're right. Okay, most of us know that our legacy begins within and then we take it with us everywhere. Everywhere we go, we're affecting people with what we believe about ourselves. Today, I would love to take you on a journey, a little adventure around the power of order and how it can play in your life. So I would love for you to visualize walking into a bedroom, opening a bedroom door in a house. So over the windows, you see pastel flowered curtains. Up against one wall, you see a wrought iron, white painted daybed with a duvet that is the same fabric, the same pastel floral pattern. Up against an adjacent wall, you see a large cream colored dresser with a mirror above it. On the front of the dresser is painted pastel flowers. The, a similar style of dresser is on the nightstand. It's replicated in the nightstand with a beautiful lamp. So even amidst all of this beauty, my sister's, my younger sister's bedroom was a challenging place to enter when we were growing up in our parents' household. As you entered, there would be these small mountains of clothing and your ankles were in danger of twisting because of the haphazardly placed books and shoes and music stands and a cello and other things that a teenage girl would have in her room. But you ask her to lend you a particular sweater or a hairbrush and she would reach into a pile or under a pile and pull out the exact item that you had requested. I found this very surprising, but that to me, that means that for her, this, there was order. There was order in this. I, some people were experiencing it as chaos, but to her, there was some order. So order is unique to each of us. We are all different individuals. Our, so when you look at these two different rooms, for those of you online, we have a room that is empty of stuff, very, very sparse. Some people might experience that as sterile and uncomfortable. Some people might experience this as safe and comforting. There's another room here in the pictures that is full of stuff. And some people might experience that as claustrophobic and uncomfortable. And some people might find this calming. So we are all different. We are all different unique creatures and our personality, our personality gets to be reflected in our spaces. We are all different. You are un a unique individual. And I often talk about your love legacy. This is the unique imprint that you make on hearts and minds through your presence, your words, and your deeds. The order in your life gets to be an expression of that unique impact that you are. And you know what's right for you. I don't know what's right for, for you. The person down the street doesn't know what's right for you. You know what's right for you. So let's imagine that order, one definition, let's just sit with this for a minute, that order is creating energetic alignment with the things in your life that matter to you. And I'd love to paint you a picture just to kind of help you go there with this visual. Who has ever played pool, also called billiards, okay? Most of us in the room have played pool or billiards. When you start the game of pool, the intention is to break up the balls you are creating space and you believe that that is gonna put you in the winning position. You believe that that is gonna allow you to see your options, give you some distance, give you some space, let you consider what's on the table. What do I wanna shoot for? What do I wanna sink? So you are creating energetic space for yourself. Everything in this world has energy. I think everyone in this room definitely is in tune with that. 
We all have energy. This chair has energy. This person has energy. This light has energy. There's energy in us, around us. So it's pretty difficult in our life when things are starting to get tighter and tighter and tighter, like on the, on the pool table. If you are the cue ball and all of these balls are surrounding you, it's pretty difficult to make a successful shot because things are in pretty tight in your space. You need to breathe. You get to have some space. And I feel that this life is a lot like this. So order is an opportunity. I believe that order is an invitation for you to create energetic alignment in your life by how you connect with what matters to you. It's about how you express yourself. It's how you arrange your life. So who in this room knows that Andrea here, your speaker, also practices energy healing? Most, most of, half of us are aware of that, most of us. Um, so I have a clearing practice that I move through before I have a client, before I have a, I'm not gonna call them a patient, before I have a client. I tune into opening up my own channel, my own frequency, and getting my ego out of the way. So that whatever's going to happen for the client is whatever's gonna happen for the client. This is not about me, this is about them, but I get to play a role in it. I get to be an antenna. You know, I get to be part of this experience. I believe in the triangle. The symbol of my business is a triangle. It's the practitioner, it's the client, and it is spirit, universe, source, universal consciousness, whatever feels good for you that is divine and boundless. This locks the triangle into place. So I have a prayer that I say before every coaching session, before every energy healing session. Dear God, help me be a clear vessel of your divine love. Help my ego step out of the way so, I, so that I allow whatever divine experience my client is ready for to come through me. So I'd like to offer something like that to you. Um, if you're walking into a new situation, say a prayer. If you're walking into about to be with someone that you have some history with, so maybe there's been tension in the past, maybe there's discomfort or upset, can you ask to be cleared? Can you ask to experience that person as love or even gratitude in advance? Thank you, universe, for being with me as I experience my mother-in-law as love. You all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you in advance. Thank you in advance. Thank you in advance. I love that type of prayer, that type of meditation. Thank you for all that you've brought into my life. Thank you as I walk into this job interview. Whatever is in my highest good, let that unfold. I love that. I learned that from Unity, that it's not, it's just what Randy said. It's not what I know. It's not the one, two, three, four, five, but it's like me being in alignment with spirit. Dear God, whatever is in my highest good, Please let that be what comes forward next. So who has felt times of balance and order in their life before? Anyone? Who has felt times of imbalance and disorder in their life before? Yes, yes. Now, I'd invite all of us to close our eyes for a moment. And I don't even wanna ask which one feels better. But allow yourself to scan inside your body and feel balance and order. For some of us, we're gonna be hunting for quite a while. For others, this is more of our normal state. We can feel balance, we can feel order. Sometimes I feel it in my chest, like my heart just feels full, and I'm like, whew, that is what balance and order feels like. Sometimes I feel it in my throat, I feel strong with my voice. I feel in command of my words. I know I'm speaking my truth. This feels like balance and order. For some of us, maybe we feel it in our hands. We've hugged people, we've hugged ourselves. But allow yourself to feel that balance and order. And as you're tuning in with that feeling, I invite you to ask yourself a couple of questions. What were the ingredients in my life when the resulting feeling was balance and order? What were the feelings in my life when there was balance and order. And just let yourself kind of maybe Rolodex through some moments in your life that you felt balance and order and what was going on? How were you showing up? Was I calm? Was I patient? Was I holding the other person high? Was I holding myself high? 
Okay, just breathe all of that in. On your next in-breath, make it nice and deep. Just soak in all of that intelligence, all of that awareness, all of that divinity, and then breathe out anything that feels stuck. Sometimes I like to shimmy uh, on my exhale. Okay, so we're gonna move forward. Thank you for that little experiment with me. Upon my reading before this talk, I read that in the teachings of unity, the principle of order was defined as the intelligence of the universe expressing through each of us. So if you are wanting to do closed eyes again, let's just listen to that, those words one more time. The order, order is the intelligence of the universe expressing through each of us. Now, I don't know about you. You can open or keep your eyes closed, either or. I don't know about you, but that's exciting to me because my life was trained with listen to your mind, know, know the answer, know the outcome, don't take risks until you, can, you know the how. You know, mind is the ruler, mind is the king, spirit, heart, ego, or spirit, heart, and source, and God is like little, little, little role, ego and mind, big role. I've been taught in my spiritual psychology training that those get to reverse. Source, spirit, soul, that's, that's, the, that's the connection we get to have. Ego is, still plays a role. Ego does support us. There's drive there. There's competitiveness there. There's showing up. There's getting out of bed. There's brushing your teeth. <laughs> like this ego does get to be in the car with you, but you get to take the keys back, right? Soul gets to have the keys. Ego, we still need you. Mind, logic, we still need you. So the hope that I get, what I feel from that statement, unity's perspective on order, that that's divinity coming through me, is that I get to trust. We get to trust that following our intuitive hits, sometimes I call it the knocking on your heart. I can't make this knock. There we go. <laughs> tap, 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 tap. Can't do it on this one either. Okay, so the intuitive hit or the knocking on your heart, that is actually going to bring you balance. That is going to create balance in your life because you're tuning in here and then you're going out here. You're going in here first and then you're stepping out. So I feel like Randy and I are definitely simpatico here. Uh, so some, some of my clients or a lot of us humans in the, the little s human and then the, there's the big s soul source part of us. So the, our little s self it often struggles with keeping an expected schedule versus feeling free and un, uninhibited with our time. So a lot of my clients have struggled with this. It's like, how, where do I balance like freedom? And then where do I balance like commitment, scheduling, action items, all of that stuff. So in my research, having structure does actually allow your creativity to flow. Like having some structure can be an ask a painter, ask an author, ask a business person and ask them what kind of structure they have. Does it serve you? The successful ones will say yes. Showing up at doing a, sun, a sunrise painting experience helped me grow my, my expressiveness. Having, you know, having certain times of day or whatever works for you, you get to know your bi biological clock. Who here has heard of to-do lists? <laughs> Ever heard of them? <laughs> I've heard of them. Okay, so my invitation to you is to just think a little bit today. I'd like to go into the mind a little bit because the mind gets to be in service to the heart. And what I would love to support those of us that we want to be free, but, but then we also want to track what we're up to, and make sure that we're sticking with what we've declared. You know, when we get those intuitive hits, then you get to turn the mind on and use the mind and map out where you're going. So I have five different little steps I'd like to share with you. Five ways to balance commitments and schedules. Question, who here just keeps all of the data in their head? Does anyone just love keeping all the info up here? I'm working on not doing that. Got it? Not doing that. <laughs> I'm working on not doing that, says Izzy. Here, here. So who, who is, has a practice of writing down action items, goals, or to-do lists? Anybody here? Anybody here? Awesome. Okay. So I will confess, I love the Notes app on my iPhone. I love to put the little open check mark circle next to each action item. And then when I get that item done, I go into the phone and I click that little button and an orange check mark shows up and it feels so good. It feels so good. What I don't like about that method is that it becomes this one long scrolling, 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 and then the overwhelm starts. And I'm like, oh. so I have some ideas that I'd like to share with you. So number one, keep it in your head. 
That does work for some people. We are not all the same. We are unique beings. So number one, keep it in your head. Number two, write it out in one list. So I have a little just picture here I want to show you. Hopefully it'll stay standing. Ah, not staying standing. Okay. This is my kid's art project down below. There we go. Okay. So for those of you who can see this list, this is just a brain dump. This is just like a, oh my gosh, there's so much in my mind. Let me get it out on paper. Um, so to whom here thinks that this feels better than keeping it in your head? Does this feel better to get it out? Okay, so there's another option here. So take this total brain dump of all the things. For those of you online, this is just a bunch of writing. So these are tiny, but I'd love for you to see that these are chunked. So you're going to chunk it into groups of similar items. I took that list and then I went, oh, this is stuff that is about the closet spaces. This is taxes. This is a standalone. <laughs> you know, here we've got clean the house, clean the basement, clean the garage. This is this like build stuff in the house, clean the house. This is all lawn stuff this whole section. And then this is stuff I'm doing in my business right now. So this is computer stuff, this is whatever. Some of you might have phone calls. Some of you might have, this is computer stuff. Some of you might have things that all involve grandma's house. You know, maybe you have that. And so chunking things out, it's almost like it frees up energetic space in your body to be like, oh, cool. Maybe I can call so-and-so and they can help me with this area this weekend. And we can bust through a few of these things. So then I recommend taking the bigger ones, like I have clear, clear the garage. Take that and add, and break it out. Break it into smaller bite-sized pieces. So, chunk, so add a little list here that's like, oh, okay. What are the things in the garage that I wanna do? So the last part, and this is for you energetically. Change the name of the list to something fun. Instead of to-do list, it becomes ta-da list. <laughs> And then have some celebration practices. Give yourself a hug. Come up with your own unique touchdown dance. For those of you who saw my interview with Chuck Doyle, you have seen my touchdown dance. Not gonna happen today. Um, but have, have, a way to <laughs> have a way to celebrate that feels good for you. Because here's the thing. We are so used to, um, I'll speak for myself. I get so used to overwhelm that I sometimes forget to celebrate. And I'm just like, well, I did those three things. I'll just add another thing and I'll stay up later and I'll add this thing and then I'll add this thing. And gosh, whew, that is not good for your body and it creates dis-ease. We all know what that means. So have some celebration so you create new anchor points of worthiness, confidence. I am a person that follows through. Like when this one of these comes off, I want to see that touchdown dance. One of these, one of these little post-its comes off, crinkle that up. Toss it between your legs <laughs> and celebrate. Celebrate that you are showing up for yourself. I got an intuitive hit. Yes, I feel like there's source in it. There's spirit in it. Yes, it feels good. I'm going to use my mind as a tool to make it happen. And once one, one tiny step towards that vision is complete, touchdown dance. Celebration. Call a girlfriend. Go for that mindfulness walk. Whatever it is. Okay, so I just wanted to go a little cerebral for just a moment. So coming back to billiards, order is about being. I think most importantly, we could just put a period right there. Order is about being, being you, you be you. So it's about being your creative, divinely expressive self and giving yourself space to explore and experiment to create the goals and the life that feel most authentically you. And just to tie it up in a bow, my sister has found her own unique order since those, pi those days of the piles of clothes. And we talked on the phone yesterday and I was like, you're in my speech tomorrow. <laughs> and she's like, man. And then we, we went down the rabbit hole of, of childhood together. It was really beautiful. So if you would like support with coming home to that divine self, whether it's something like to-do lists or whether it's like reclaiming your identity, your passion, your power, you can get all sorts of free videos at andrealuzon.com. You can follow me on Instagram and all the places under Legacy Liberation Coaching. I would love to see you all there. Thank you so much.